China would never seek sphere of influence, but China is influential. China's influence probably is as strong as that of the United States. The point is, cozy existence of China and the United States in this region should not be at the security cost of China. I would say China still should remain calm. The United States talk about a competition. We still talk about cooperation. China and the United States could cooperate anywhere, even militarily, to safeguard the world peace and provide some kind of security public goods, like what we have done in the Gulf of Aden. How do you define the word sphere of influence? And what are the sphere of influence in the world today? It actually uh, means uh, a country or, or an organization has a kind of uh, exclusive uh, authority over other states or other organizations, be it political, economical, or even military. And other states would show kind of difference to the state in authority. United States always say it doesn't have a does need a sphere of influence. But as Graham Madison, a professor of Harvard University, pointed out, after the Cold War, basically the whole world is American sphere of influence. When Biden goes to the White House, do you think that kind of sphere of influence or the alliance will be strengthened? That definitely is uh, one of the uh, objectives of Biden administration. The question rather is whether he can succeed in doing that. I believe the success of American-led alliance to a large extent lie in how the United States would be willing to be sort of free-ridden by its allies. Because you are your number one. Other junior or small brothers take it for granted that you got to pay more. For example, NATO budget is covered by the United States over 70%. And that is always uh, considered unfair by American presidents. The sphere of influence comes at a uh, at certain price. No wonder people would think China is using the Belt and the Road Initiative to establish its sphere of influence. So what's your take on that? Some people even call uh, Southeast Asia the backyard of China but we still have American allies, we still have territorial disputes, so we do not enjoy that kind of uh, exclusive influence in any region in China's periphery. We don't need it. Let me come uh, back to your question of Belton Road. This is uh, the offer of a developing country. During this whole process, Belton Road might uh, uh, also suffer some uh, setbacks. For example, how can we expect uh, uh, the arrival of uh, COVID-19. Mm -hmm. But China actually, during the whole process, has proven to be flexible. Belt and Road Initiative is not a trap. It's the uh, largest uh, project in human history, and we mean to be mutually beneficial. It definitely would change the, the landscape, especially the economic landscape of all these countries involved, and makes their life much better. How do you convince the world that China does not want to establish its own sphere of influence? China today is an integral part of the international system. China's rise is from the existing international system. Therefore, there's no need for China to challenge the system. We live in the same world. We're in the same forest. We talk about being guardian of the international order. Is it possible for these two big countries to coexist peacefully in the same region, for example, in Southeast Asia? Well, that is really challenging, because even if China doesn't uh, seek a sphere of influence, the United States would uh, probably still consider uh, the Western Pacific to be its uh, sphere of influence, and that explains why the United States would uh, keep on uh, increasing its uh, freedom of navigations in the South China Sea and would increase its surveillance and reconnaissance against China. We understand you have allies here. The point is, cozy existence of China and the United States in this region should not be at the security cost of China. China doesn't want to be policemen. China doesn't want to export its social system or development model. Instead, China and the United States could cooperate anywhere even militarily, to uh, safeguard uh, the world peace and provide some kind of uh, security public goods, like what we have done in the Gulf of Aden, where Chinese Navy 
and the International Navy, including the American Navy, have actually joined hand in providing uh, protection to um, international seafarers and uh, merchant ships. A follow-up question. Because of the United States is thinking that China is competing with them on the sphere of influence, so they are even becoming more reluctant to be cooperating with China in the other areas and the regions. They call it strategic panicking. I believe uh, their approach is wrong to take China as a strategic competitor. Mm -hmm. I don't believe the allies, uh, American allies, be it in uh, Europe or in Asia, would actually follow Americans' lead. Why? Because of two reasons. Number one, China is the largest trading partner of all American allies. Number two, China is a nuclear weapon state, the second largest economy in the world. During their strategic panic period, what shall China do? I would say China still should remain calm. If you look at all these areas identified by them mm -hmm. in which we could uh, cooperate, there are so few. They are so limited. You just cannot uh, have 90% uh, uh, competition with 10% uh, cooperation. It would change people's mentality and make people not so sincere about 10% cooperation. Mm -hmm. So even if there is an element of competition in our relationship, we should try our best to make sure at least cooperation, even in mentality, could prevail over competition. And in the worst case, do not let the competition slide into confrontation.